as must win as it can get for both of these teams because it doesn't look like the teams up at the top are coming down to them anytime soon. These other teams that are already on one loss and even two as you get further down the standings, I mean, they've got to get on the horse. They've got to go chase these other teams down. Sure, Mirage and Omni Nation, one of them's going to take an L, but everybody else, I mean, you might have to get, say, seven wins to get into that top three. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a battle for the top, and I think that you're absolutely right. It is a match that matters to both of these teams. RBG coming in 0-1 so far. You don't want to start the season off 0-2, just making it even harder. If Chaos, though, can pick up a win here, they're sitting solid middle of the pack, and the players at the top and the teams at the top are within an attainable reach. They can get there. They can climb up. Um, and I think that Chaos is going to be one of those teams that can compete up there in that top three, maybe just out of the top three, sitting number four seed. But uh, I expect them to finish in the upper half of the season. I'm not sold on RBG yet. Well, this is a good chance for RBG to also prove what they actually have on their roster to just prove what they're made of and show that, yes, they can compete with some of the upper echelon teams in North America. Of course, it's a different look from what we saw last season from RBG. That former team is now flight up in the RLCS. And I wonder if the this Zookeepers team, with all that experience from last year coming into 2020, maybe not necessarily this season. I think that's a huge step up if they want to make that leap to the promotion tournament and into the RLCS. But at least get into the top six, contend for even a top four finish. Just if nothing else, keep your spot for next season. And then all of a sudden by the end of 2020 or whenever the next season would happen to be, then all of a sudden you got something to build on here. And, you know, these players that were at the bottom of the league before they start to become household names. Yeah, it definitely sets you up if you can at least maintain your spot in the league to have a better positioning going into the next season, especially if you're at the top and upper half of that those groupings of players that are staying in. Now you're familiar with the majority of the people there. You know where the teams below you are. You have a lot of information going into the next season, which sets you up to possibly get into those positions to play for the RLCS in the next round. Uh Again, though, it, it, yeah. it, becomes, it becomes a bit of a battle, especially if you get into that upper two and three spot and you end up getting to go up against, you know, people like Cloud9G2. And, you know, sometimes those, those promotional tournaments become a bit, of, bit chaotic or a little bit lopsided. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see how this one plays out this year. Yeah, and I've got a soft spot for a team like RBG, who are formerly Zookeepers, because, again, they made that decision so early on to commit to staying together as a team. And it's so rare in this environment where we see we see sometimes players get dropped at the roster lock deadline. And it, it's just it's a situation that nobody wins out on except for the Birds last season, now E United. But, um, you know, they we see so many times players are willing to just change rosters almost seemingly because somebody hit a double tap and ranked one time and like, I have to have this player instead. And for this group to stay together, I think that that's going to serve them very well throughout the entire calendar year. I think it's great when you can find a, a set of guys that have decided that they have a goal that they want to yeah. achieve and we're going to go after and we're going to attack in that manner. You know, that shows a lot emotionally that they're, or that they're not emotional. They're focused on the task at hand. We'll see if that ends up getting it done for them. So we are underway in our first matchup of the day, Chaos and RBG. This tool will start things off for the new look RBG squad. Of course, the Orc did say when they released the old RBG roster, they were not going to be gone for long, and it did not take them very long to pick up the Zoo Keepers. That shot's going to go well wide, but Bambi's there now. Corrupted G takes out Tool, and that took out Bambi's centering option. So Turoko and company can try to clear this away. They don't do so. This Corrupted G will be called on, and this is going to drop in front, but nobody's there. Really Control's been on the side of RBG so far. We've been basically just sitting in the chaos half. Tool, he's going to bring that back in and over, tries to put one up high. Corrupted going to knock it away. Speed feels pretty good so far out of RBG. There will be Corrupted G trying to dribble around RBG. And Taroko does lob one up for Mechdos, who doesn't have any more teammates to work with. Didn't need them almost. That one is saved away. Porklet 
with no boost whatsoever, will steal some out of the end. Go hunting after Mechdos, and because Mechdos had to avoid him, Tool's able to score. They've been aggressive so far. I really like it. RBG um, moments before were making some challenges. Uh, demo in the middle of the field, an early cut from Tool. They're aggressive in that midfield over the ball, and they're attacking the net. Working out well. See if that ends up staying, if it stays the case. We have seen so far today a couple times where a team has something going in game one. If they can't get it going in game two, though, they tend to fall apart, so. Yeah, again, 3-1 the result when they met last season, but certainly a lot has changed. And Tool has changed a lot here. He's got his second goal of the series. 3-17, 2-0, both coming at the hands of Tool, just firing them in. A little bit of a defensive breakdown out of chaos. Yeah, this is an RBG team that when they played last season, they did not fare very well on the offensive end at all, and even worse defensively, but seem to have shaken out the cobwebs, and of course, a lot of time playing together will fix those. This will be Tool. Z gets stuck on the wall. Corrupted G for Mechdos, who does win the race. Corrupted G coming on will not get a shot off as Bambi clears. And this is going towards the art, uh, towards the chaos net, and I believe it goes in off of a green car. It went in off of Mechdos here. Bambi gonna make an odd touch there as he comes down off the wall. Touches it right out in front of Mechdos, who had pre-flipped to get some speed there. Ends up connecting the ball, putting it in the net. That is a goal, Mectos, but it is the wrong end of the field. Credit the goal to Porklet. So two for Tool, one for Porklet off the incidental pool shot. And now Porklet lobbing another ball inward, and this is trouble for Taroko and Corrupted G. But it will be Taroko recovering, and with 30 boost, he will find Mectos. Will he find a teammate in front? No, he will not. Instead, it's coming back the other way. And a very quick counterattack on the part of RBG. They're not going to let Chaos get close and give them any time to get back. And as a result, it looks like Chaos going to be a little hesitant moving forward. And that's where RBG can strike. It feels like the third man in the rotation right now on the side of Chaos isn't getting there. There's been a couple balls that have gone off the backboard. Off Balls that had space with some opportunity, and that third man's just not there. The offensive attack just seems a bit slow. Popped away for Corrupted G to track, but he won't get to this ball. Porklet will, and he'll score off the assist from Bambi. No slowdown out of RBG. This ball going out, and he is already up. Porklet there before the ball even touches the backboard, has the read, clean touchdown into the net. 4-0 to RBG. And it's really starting to feel like all season long, anybody that I give the nod to in the old prediction arenas is getting the old kiss of death. This is gonna be off to the corner. Yeah, see, I thought that that's what it was, and I tried to go opposite of you okay. in week one on one of them, and I got punished for that. So I, I can't win if I go with you or against you. So you're doing better than I am. If not for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. I need you to know that. This will be Mectos trying to clear one away. Get anything going at all for Chaos Esports Club, who, again, they were part of that promotion tournament last season. They had a couple chances to promote to the RLCS. Mectos will get one back here, but they've only got 60 seconds to work with. Nice aggression out of Taroko to really open that play up as he takes the defender down the wall and out. Corrupted, not able to get that one down, but gets the ball back up. Mechdos able to put that one away. So the final minute will burn off the clock. Will Mechdos bring them any closer? He really should have, because the defender missed on that touch. Taroko does kiss the ceiling, but will not do much else with this, and he will at least steal some boost, but because he did that, nobody's home on the other side. Bambi scores, and that means everybody from RBG ends up in the score sheet. Feels good when you can all get on the board. A little team chemistry, have some fun with it. Everybody shoots, everybody scores. Everybody shoots, everybody scores. That's the best way. 
5-1. And perhaps counting more. There's nothing saying RBG just can't score anymore. They looking to maybe pay back what they suffered at the hands of Chaos a season ago. They gave up five goals on two different occasions. They are a far cry from that now. This will drop down. Pass out to Taroko. He'll get one back. A small consolation, if nothing else. One of the things that I am noticing, though, RBG breaking plays up in the middle. They're slowing the ball down. Unfortunately, this one didn't work out, but right before this score did happen, there was a uh, slowdown in the middle of the field, trying to buy some time for the teammates to get back. That first guy is making a lot of good touches on the ball to slow it down and allow them to... Ooh, thought that one was going to go in. Porklet just gets a piece of it. That would have added a semblance of interest into the proceedings at the end. But it does remain a three-goal lead for RBG, and it will be, in fact, a three-goal victory for RBG Esports as they take down Chaos in game one. And again, they just jumped on Chaos very early on, didn't let them even come out of the blocks in this opening game. And if you're Chaos on the other side, you, you kind of feel okay about the goals at the end, but they were in garbage time and they didn't really mean a whole lot. Yeah, they, I, I'm not worried on the RBG side of those final goals. They don't. They really didn't mean a ton. You could tell that the RBG was playing up a little bit more. They didn't have that third man back as far, left the net open a little bit. I don't think it's anything to be worried about. On the RBG side, there's a lot to be happy about right now, though, as all of them get on the board, outscoring 5-2, to two, as we just saw. Great play, and if they can maintain that, they want a 3-0 here because next week they've got Stromboli, so you want to build the momentum now and come in feeling good next week. Yeah, what a, what a time to maybe reach your peak is right when you're about to face some of those top, top teams, especially Stromboli, as good as we have seen them so far this season. Not getting too far ahead of ourselves, though, looking at that matchup. Back to this one. They've got a lot of business to take care of still with uh, Chaos. Got to take two more games. If you're Chaos now, what does it take to get them back into this and kind of flush this one from their memory? Defense to quick transition. they the defense side's breaking down. If they can get in there and get a couple stops, get the ball moving back into the offensive half, quick pass out to the side or an infield pass, get something going early and quickly, get that momentum, get those goals that just feel like you just demolished the other team. They had no chance at it. Get something to get your morale up. One nil in the series to RBG. Let's see what they have for a follow-up as that pass is dropped down from Tool towards Porklet. Blown up, though by Corrupted G before he ate a demo. And now Mekdos in the general direction of Taroko, but he wisely decides to rotate back and he'll be able to help Corrupted G. Not that he needed it at the moment. Bambi down to Porklet. Big drive, upper 90, and Porklet strikes first. Yeah, Corrupted tried to bring this one out. Bambi with the placement right on the money to Porklet and just a boomer into that upper 90. Well passed, well shot. I say a job well done all around by RBG so far in this series. Get a demo on Taroko to start things off on the ensuing kickoff. And it will be Mekdos. Possession given away. Bambi trying to find Tool, but that's another power clear. It'll find Mekdos on target. And as slow as Chaos was getting back a couple of times, this time it happened to RBG. That's what I'm talking about. I was looking for them to get some quick passes out into the open field. Nice infield pass into the air. Mekdos able to get up. Beautiful redirect. Get those ones that they just cannot react to. Get the speed. Ooh, nice reaction there from Corrupted to get up into the mid and break that one up. Gives Taroko an opportunity at a shot. So what does RBG have for an answer? Oh, what a touch from Porklet. Should be an open net, but he didn't get any power behind this. I think he was just a little indecisive, and boy, did it cost him. Had he not gone up for that, Bambi was coming in behind him full speed. Bambi could have put some power on that shot, and on the angle that he was at, he probably would have put it into the left side in that far corner away from the defenders. That might have been a communication breakdown there. I think Bambi should have called him off. Now Taroko had to kind of hover through the air to get a piece of that, Woo! and it starts a counterattack back the other way. Mekdo strikes again. 
That's two in a row, two quick ones. Nice pass out. Mektos up for the redirect once again. Just throw the ball at him. He'll find home. Two to one for Chaos. We've seen so many times a team will take a lopsided W in game number one, but all of a sudden all it does is add fuel to the fire on the other side. That's what seems to be happening here as Chaos are striking back with a vengeance. Another drive on target that Portland has to clear. Now Taroko back towards Mektos and more trouble defensively for RBG. They survived this time, but how many more chances can they afford to give Chaos? That's going to be saved away and Tool will carry it out. Roko unable to react to that great uh, touch there from Mektos to open up another possibility. Just off the mark is Tool. That should have been a goal right there. That is a huge blown opportunity. And, uh, and your heart breaks because that was a very selfless play. A lot of players might have just tried to dribble in, make an awful flick that ends up, you know, about three car lengths above the crossbar. Instead, he makes the great pass and is not rewarded with an assist. Now RBG goes back to the drawing board and they don't have to wait very long. Tool will slam one home. That shot coming out of Porkland looked like it was going to be wide. Tool recognizing it though, gets a quick turn, able to get back and redirect that ball back on target. Tying it up 2-2, 220 left to go here in game number two. Past the halfway mark, past the halfway line as Mektos trying to work off of that feed from Taroko. Now Corrupted G is going to try to harass Tool. That's going to get over Taroko, and it could be trouble for Chaos. Seems to be okay as RBG respected him going up for it, expecting the touch, which you would expect that here in the Rival Series. Every now and then, though, somebody has a whiff. I think the story of this game so far, this one game in particular has been missed opportunities. Plenty of them actually on the part of RBG, yet here they are still tied it to a piece. This Meanwhile, should easily chaos, be this could be one, but Corrupted G pushes it wide off the first touch and can't bring it back in front for Mektos. So now here comes Bambi. You're absolutely right, though. It should be 4-2, 5-2 right now. A lot of missed opportunities on the offensive half from RBG to start this one in game two. But their defense is holding up. They're keeping themselves in the match. A little bit of danger there, and Tool going to clear that one out. Forklift with a power clear, trying to get across midfield. It does not work out. That ball's locked back in, and it is trouble to Rocco. Blocked by Tool, and how fitting that Tool made the save because it was his mess to clean up. Now Mektos from the ceiling, trying to get one more to carry that by Bambi. Has not worked out. Chiroko doesn't even try. Instead, it'll be Corrupted G left to defend against a pair of RBG attackers, which he does. Now Chiroko to Mektos, and I think he got a piece of that, but the shot Locked in front by Bambi, and it was just enough to fend off another attack. Down to 20 seconds as Mekto shoots one on, easily saved by Bambi. But it's the follow-up that you have to worry about, and Taroko thought about having a look. Now he Woo. will, but again, that indecisiveness cost him an opportunity, and with 10 seconds left, we are staring down the prospect of overtime. Unless we have some last-second heroics, the ball played even further back by Chaos, and this will float towards the net, but cleared away, and that should take us to OT. That was scary on the defensive side there a moment ago on the RBG side as they almost triple committed on the ball. Two of them stayed with it, battled each other for the ball, and almost on goal, two shots come by, and both gonna be off target. Well, a lot of players on that ensue, on that kickoff in overtime, went to go get boost. And as a result, Chaos won the kickoff and won the battle and the game. Corrupted G with a beautiful double to finish off RBG and tie the series. Yeah, becoming him that veteran presence on the team. Corrupted, not phased by this OT whatsoever. Really nice clean double tap there off that back wall, able to put it down and in ties it up.
RBG, Chaos, both looking pretty good here in this in this match. But I still think the story was that RBG let a lot of opportunities kind of fall to the wayside. A couple missed opportunities there that that game could have gone very different. And they only had five shots as a team. I mean, the shots are lopsided 15 to 5 in favor of Chaos. And while those didn't numbers feel that way. I know. It, it, while those numbers look staggering, they it didn't feel that way. As you mentioned, it felt like it was a back and forth game for the most part with RBG. I think because they had so much possession with so few shots, that probably skewed the perception. They also had a lot of big clears that came out. I know uh, Mechdos came from like midfield to just kind of catch and drag a couple away that were landing near the box. So there's probably those numbers are a little skewed just by the types of shots that were occurring. I don't think they were real shots on net. A couple of them off wide, left, or right, but close enough. Um, it felt very evenly matched. It didn't feel like what was it? You said 15 to five. Yeah it, yeah, it didn't feel that way at all to me. Yeah, 15 to five for Chaos. And again, this is a team in Chaos that beat this team last season 14 to seven on the scoreboard over four games. It does not look like that kind of one sided series this time around. And it's a treat now to watch how far this RBG team has come. What a difference just a few months makes as we kick it off again in game three. Put somebody on match point at the end of this five minutes. It could be RBG if they can convert shots like that, but that's one that Bambi's going to want back. Had nice power on it, just wasn't able to get it on the mark. Nice pass. pass. And, and even better defense, too, by Porkler because that's got to be a quick read, and he jumped right in front of the shot coming on. It's, it's so easy to overlook quality midfield defense like that, and we see it all the time in the Rival Series. Uh, I love watching midfield probably more than the defensive uh, goal line stands. One may be a, l a lot more hype to watch, but that midfield player is the guy that kind of controls the pace and tempo of the game, and a lot of the times is dictating where that ball's going. I know all the kids these days like the high scoring, you know, seven to six games, and for that, I say what Flakes always says, go play once and get off my lawn. I like a good one nothing battle as much as the next guy. This will be Corrupted G playing it out to Taroko. That's a clever pass. He got the shot off, and it's saved away by Tool. He just barely got a piece. Another opportunity there, Mechdos. Very smart to not go in for that. There could have been baited into a situation that would have left their defenseless Tool wow. with a light touch, and Bambi with a quick reaction. But Mechdos going to come through and fire that one back home. It is Mektos who scores off the assist officially from Taroko, but there's Corrupted G picking up the scraps in the net, making sure nobody could make the save. Chaos Esports Club up very early on here in game three. And, you know, Corrupted G, he's making his presence felt without actually lighting the lamp himself. He's yet to actually score a goal in this series, but it hasn't mattered because of his presence everywhere else on the field. He's had great presence in the assist side, and he's also been there on the defense. On the offensive side, if he's not getting an assist, he's at least in there and making his presence known. He's got bumps, he's aggressive, he's getting demos, he's opening up the plays for the rest of the team, making their lives easier. Made a couple good challenges to get Chaos on the offensive end, at least for a brief moment. And that's a possession they're gonna keep going on here as Porklet's gonna have to climb up. And he'll need one more touch. Now finally a shot on from RBG. That's sent away. What else can they do, though? Can they sustain this pressure? Try to get back into this game. It's another shot on from Portland. Didn't get any power behind it. Now Taroko downfield on an empty net, and he'll score. Chaos turning things around here, bringing the momentum into this match after getting that OT win in the last round. I also want to correct us. Did we say Corrupted didn't have a goal yet? Uh, he scored the OT him. goal. He did score the OT goal. Yes. There we go. I was about to say, I, he's, I was like, wait a second. I knew that. I was just making that sure man did little... some things. I think yes. he's done some things. Yet to score in regulation. There. Now I'm technically correct. We, which we apologize as, for taking that from you, Gabe. Which, we will as give it back. Jeeves will tell you, is the only kind of correct that matters. Porklet thought about coming up to midfield. He'll let Corrupted G take possession, and now Corrupted G seems determined to score a goal, but instead he's dispossessed by Tool. Now Bambi Ooh. around Mechdos, through Corrupted G. 
oh. trying to get a piece of Taroko, but it all takes so long to develop that Chaos completely recovers on the defensive end. The ball is cleared downfield, and that attack dies off. Gets it past two, oh, but doesn't hello. get the third touch to get it around that last guy either. And it was just kind of how hard he was cutting the ball around the players. It made it take just a bit too long. Now it'll be given away to Bambi. Up against Mekdos. Now Porkland wants the ball. He's got Tool, and he'll roll it right through two to one. A little bit of life showing up here for RBG as we approach the final minute and a half of this match. Still down one, they got a little work to do, but quick passes like that open nets up real quick. This series has been a treat to watch. Outside of game one where it was it was nice to see RBG get off on the right foot very quickly. Woo. He almost got one off the kickoff. Now Portland out of the corner. That's going to go through Mektos. A dangerous moment for Chaos defensively. It is Chaos in front of their net. Now Corrupted G will take over in the corner, and that's the calm veteran presence that Chaos wants, controlling the ball while everything is going haywire around them. Another pass over towards Bambi, and Taroko jumps in the way. Taroko corrupted both double committing on that. Could have been dangerous, but there was no one there to follow it up. Bambi might have another touch here. That's another missed ball that could have been a good pass opportunity. That's a couple of them so far this round for Bambi. Some of those lingering issues from game two starting to carry over into game number three here. Yeah, that's taking too much time to try and do too much. And then Tool couldn't control his car or the ball, but Bambi dunks another one through. Taroko has that go dangerously in front of the net but Corrupted G will take over. Now here's Porkland. All hands on deck offensively now for RBG. Time to throw caution to the wind as they try to find an equalizer with 15 seconds left. Drop down to Tool, trying to beat Taroko, and he does. 14 seconds left on the clock, and RBG ties it up. High chance that we're going to be doing another overtime round here in match number three. Yeah, 14 seconds left. Overtime number two is looming. Unless, again, somebody can do something about that. They have nine seconds to do so. Bambi for Tool, and that's intercepted by Corrupted G. So it will be Chaos Esports Club getting the last look in regular time, and we will go to extra time. Boost, boost consumption 100% going the way of RBG. They're playing quick, they're playing a super aggressive. If Chaos looks for these opportunities, I think they're they're presenting themselves. Wait for them to come on the attack. They're pushing all three guys. They're going for the they're spending a lot of boost and they're leaving themselves open. So I'd almost say do a little bit of defense here and then look for a quick one. These haven't worked all day for anybody. These attempts to just carry the ball out you need to start looking for a few more passes. You have two teammates on the field though. We've seen Teams use their Ooh. opponents as well, and a ricochet off to the side that Taroko will take advantage of. Sometimes it just works out your way, and it did for Taroko and Chaos. So I didn't get to see. Bambi was up. He's the guy that's supposed to be challenging that ball there. Where were the other two? They're playing super aggressive on the offensive side, and they're not having a third man back. So if you can get that pass off the sidewall and get a second touch, that might be the play to get around RBG here as they go into uh, game number three. I'd love to see Chaos try and look for some more sidewall passes to themselves. Just some quick shots. 100% goal participation for Taroko. Two goals and one assist for himself. Nobody assisted on Taroko's goals. That's par for the course. He does that from time to time. He will take over games. And if you don't account for him, this is the kind of thing that happens. And now, after a pair of 3-2 overtime victories, everything RBG did for the first five minutes of the series has been washed away. They find themselves with their backs up against it. And I talked about that a little bit earlier, where we've seen these matches go the way of one team for match number one. And when they're been kind of a blowout, these other teams are are reacting well. They're recovering and they're figuring out what the issue is and correcting that and then making plays in games two, three, and four. This is almost the story of what happened to Chaos in last week against Stromboli where they figured it out and Stromboli came back and started giving them giving them the uh, you know, giving them the hands. 
Well, in the words of the very talented John Cooper, they need a hero right now. RBG Esports, their backs are against it. They're down 2-1 to Chaos Esports Club. We got game four on Utopia Coliseum coming your way here. And again, if Chaos can take this, they're home free, get to 2-1, and one, and they're, they'd be pretty happy with that, I would think, to start this season. Of course, the, the key as always, and it would certainly apply to these two teams, especially Chaos, win when you're not necessarily at your best. I think anybody who knows these guys knows that they can play a lot better than they have. They have been pushed to the limit by RBG Esports. Of course, the other half of that is if you let a team hang around long enough, that can also come back to bite you. And this RBG team, again, they are certainly hanging around. In fact, they're hanging around on the offensive end. Only for a moment, who's gonna come up here? It is Bambi off the demo by Tool, and Portlet will give Chase the corner. This so far feels similar to game number one, where it started off a little slow, but the presence was all RBG as they kept the ball stuck in the chaos half. So far this first minute, it's definitely going the way of RBG. Downfield towards Taroko. Again, the last person that RBG wants to see all by himself with the ball. So now they'll try Mechdos, which is also not a good option if you are an on-watching defender. I don't know if any of them bringing the ball towards you is, is a good option. All three of these players can definitely make it happen any day of the week out here on the pitch. I think I would be okay with Corrupted G bringing the ball downfield coming at me because at least that means he's not gonna demo me because he has racked up more than his share over the early season so far. Mechdos needs to get this out towards midfield. Does get the ball by Bambi, but Bambi knocks him off the ball and it will be Porkla now. He has Tool to his left, but the ball goes right and Bambi does not. Now Taroko against Ooh. Bambi. Oh, the dance fakes. my pathetic puppet dance. Taroko around one, gets it past Tool, brings it down, acts like he's going for it, gets Bambi to jump and just sneaks it in on that lower corner. Beautiful play. Whew. All right, cut that the strings hurting. off him there. One nil to Chaos. And that is what Taroko is capable of time and time again. And it never gets old watching it happen. Great pass out to mid. Forklet didn't get anything behind the shot, however. It was all he could do just to get a piece of it. But RBG back on the attack. They get a bump out of the corner. Now it'll be Tool. Great centering pass. Back to Tool. And Mechdos read it the whole way. Can he stop Bambi as well? Well, Taroko can. And that's good enough. Tool's been so quick to get out, try and break these midfield passes up. He's the guy that's making those quick cuts, aggressive plays for the ball, getting the demos right now. Unfortunately, nothing has come of it since game number one. Popped up off the challenge by Mechdos. Porklet now trying to find Tool, does off the pass from the ceiling. Now Bambi, that's gonna be high and wide. It's a double commit by Taroko and Corrupted G, but it hasn't cost them. They do recover. and. If you're going to double commit, at least don't burn a lot of boost. Neither of them did, and it works out. A lot of passes here coming out of RBG, but every single one of them just seems to be a light touch off, and they cannot get any power into the ball. The passes are fantastic. The follow up, not so great. Taroko going to do it again as he brings it down himself. Taroko now with goal number five in the series, and I'm pretty sure only one of them has an assist attached to it. This is what he does. The Taroko show is in full swing. That's a zero assist so far on these. It is all Taroko here in game number, I'm about to say three, four. We are in game four. And it could be the fourth and final game of this series because it doesn't look like RBG has an answer for Taroko. They also don't have a way to get through into the blue net. Still have time though, a minute 10 and counting. Bambi's giving it away to Mechdos. Mechdos double, no, as Porkla jumps in the way. He's got a full tank of boost, but cannot take possession with him. 
That's a good ball downfield. Borkler was already halfway down there, but he, I think he missed the midfield boost, and that slowed him down immensely. It just, it, again, it, it's missed opportunities. The story is ringing true. The boost side, the speed of play, average speed of player is all in the favor of RBG. They're just not getting the power and the connections off of any of the passes. Currently on boost, they're dominating on taking boost. They've collected the boost on the opponent's end of the field almost as much as they have on their own. Taroko will collect here. Sky one up across midfield, again threatening to score an unassisted hat trick. Doesn't work out this time, but he doesn't need it. 15 seconds remain. RBG needs to score right about now if they're going to have a chance. And will they know? Corrupted G slams shut the door. And Chaos Esports Club, they're going to get a pair of overtime victories and a clean sheet in game four. And that is all she wrote.